Welcome to our webinar today on workflow templates to systematize and streamline healthcare planning. Today, we are joined by Caribou, a healthcare planning and cost optimization platform for financial advisors. Before we jump in, I'll give a quick introduction of today's speakers. So today, uh, leading the conversation is Ron Gordetsky. If you have not had the pleasure to meet Ron yet, he is very passionate about delivering a solution to help financial advisors provide a complex service at scale. As the co-founder, Ron has literally worked with hundreds of financial advisors and their teams to make providing a proactive client experience easy. And from Caribou, we are joined by Christine Simone, who is the co-founder of Caribou. She is driven by her passion for healthcare innovation. She has held notable leadership positions at digital health and medical device companies, working with key stakeholders in the industry, from payers to providers to veteran affairs. You can find some of Christine's articles in publications such as Advisors Perspectives, Crunchbase, and Woman 2.0. And last but not least, we have Blair. So Blair, you can find him in the chat, and many of you already recognize his face. Um, so he will be facilitating Q&A at the end. And over to you, Ron. Awesome. We're really excited to be joined by Christine and Caribou. We've had the pleasure of working together um, over the last few months. and. Caribou offers healthcare planning software for financial planners and advisors like yourselves and your clients so that you can plan for and optimize healthcare costs. Christine, I would love to pass it over to you to talk about why we're here. Thanks, Ron. And thank you so much for having us today to talk about this really important uh, subject of financial planning and category of a service offering for financial advisors and planners in the industry because the why we're here is really important. As you can see on the slide right now, eight in 10 of future retirees will state that out of control healthcare costs is one of their top fears as they approach retirement specifically. A lot of advisors in the room likely specialize around that key milestone, retirement planning. And so healthcare is a really important piece of that conversation to address with your clients. And if you go to the next slide, you can see all of the different life events, as we call them, that impact healthcare costs. And based on what we know in working with advisors, as well as your clients in the industry, clients want to turn to their financial advisor in all of these cases. Now, where there's a little bit of misalignment is that only 17% of financial professionals feel confident in delivering a healthcare planning offering. But that's why we're here today. We're going to focus on that one specific uh, life event here, approaching 65 and starting Medicare soon. This is going to be one of hopefully uh, many workflows that we work with you all to implement over the course of our partnership. And we're going to talk about why this one specifically is important, the strategies around implementing it, and then what it looks like in practice. Sounds very exciting, Christine. Thank you so much. It's it's true. There are so many life events that financial advisors and planners touch throughout the client's life. And really focusing in on this one, I think, is, is really helpful. Um, so in your experience, then, where have you found that friction to be in implementing a solution? So there's a couple key things that we're going to walk through. And I think first and foremost, it's starting the conversation. That probably is the hardest part, just getting over that initial hump of knowing how and when to have the Medicare conversation with clients. We've seen all sorts of scenarios, um, some of which that important deadline was missed, some of which it's, a, it's approached in you know, the days leading up to the end of the deadline. But in an ideal scenario, a lot of the advisors that we work with actually start the plan for Medicare about two to three years in advance. You can actually start to paint that picture for your client have that conversation with them, get an idea of cost and include that in the financial plan as early as two to three years before that actual transition. That's typically when we see clients start to have those questions. And what that does is it actually plants the seed in their mind that you are the person that they can then turn to at their 65th birthday. So we've seen all sorts of creative strategies. For example, we have a partner 
who sends out a happy 64th birthday card to all of their clients. So it's a little creative. They, they talk about how you know, we work with Caribou and they're a preferred partner for us to support you through this Medicare transition. Um, but ideally just being proactive, getting ahead of it rather than scrambling at the last minute gives both you and your client lots of time to make that decision. It can be a decision that is hard to reverse and we'll get into some of that in the challenges that follow. But again, the more time, the better. Give yourself and your client the opportunity to explore the different options by doing that well in advance. And the way in which you do that is ask your client, you know, have you thought about Medicare costs? Um, what about Medicare do you understand and what might be confusing to you? Again, I understand that financial advisors aren't necessarily the specialists in this in most cases, they're often the generalists, but that's where your task is to either learn it, which could be time consuming. So, you know, we don't expect that from, from you. Um, find a preferred partner or find resources to at least direct your clients to. Um, those three options are definitely the ones worth exploring before you even think about going through this workflow in full. The next big thing is knowing how to actually conduct the analysis. So starting the conversation is great. Now you've got an engaged client. They want to walk through uh, their Medicare options with you. Now, what do you do? So again, this is where a preferred partner or a resource can be very beneficial. But if you do want to learn how to do this cost review, it's definitely possible. I've spoken with advisors who have internal team members uh, who have the time to dedicate to things like this. I kind of hinted at this in the first challenge, but one of the things about Medicare is not only just the fixed costs of Medicare, so what your premiums are, what your drug plan might cost you, but it's also the risk of some of the plans. If you have original Medicare, for example, your total financial risk is often a lot lower, depends on your cost, but it's often a lot lower because your out-of-pocket maximum is lower on original Medicare. Whereas if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you might pay less every month, but your risk profile is actually a lot larger. So understanding those key differences in costs is important in evaluating options at this time point. You can understand all the costs of that directly on Medicare.gov. Uh, you can do research by calling carriers, insurance carriers directly as well. Again, this does take time, but all that information is available to you and available to your clients if you want to do sort of a self-serve assessment of costs. There's not only costs that come into play, there's also sort of some soft preferences, like are you comfortable getting uh, approval to see a specialist or, uh, sorry, approval for certain medical services or needing a referral to see a specialist. These are other preferences to kind of bake in to this decision-making process as you're going through this review. We can jump now to the third challenge, which is specifically related to now that you want to start it, now that you've done the analysis, realizing and also communicating the return on that investment to your clients is definitely important. And I think that a lot of advisors haven't necessarily nailed this when it comes to healthcare planning yet. Just like any other insurance plan, if you're constantly reviewing it, ensuring that it matches your needs, or just like with what you do with the financial plan or any investment strategy, you're optimizing it based on where the client is at that time point, uh, based on their scenarios, their needs, their budget, and any other criteria that you might be looking to match um, circumstances to. The same is applicable for healthcare planning. Your needs as a young 35-year-old are very different than your needs when you turn 65 and transition on to Medicare. There's different criteria that clients are likely looking for. And so understanding that reviewing this annually is really important for cost savings opportunities. So there's a dollar value attached to it. Right now, on average, we save our customers and their clients a few thousand dollars every single year by reviewing their Medicare plans. But the other big thing that is a little less tangible and probably more important is the relationship that you get to build with your client in addressing healthcare planning. I mentioned, you know, eight out of 10 of future retirees will state that out of control healthcare costs is one of their top financial fear. 
there's lots of data that also supports that clients really want their financial advisor to be addressing the full scope of their financial picture. I know that Hubbly has, you know, workflows around other adjacent offerings, perhaps like tax planning, estate planning, other workflows that help to support supporting clients' full financial scope. The same is true of healthcare planning. So realizing that addressing this proactively with clients not only reduces overspending, but it also strengthens that relationship with your clients. It helps them place trust in you that you're being proactive about these transitions, as well as it helps you deepen that connection, but also build connections with new clients. Um, attracting new prospective clients is a big component of healthcare planning. If you're sitting down in a prospecting meeting and you are able to address a concern related to healthcare planning by saying you have this implemented into your workflow, that is a client that is more likely to onboard with you given, uh, given you addressing that and having a tool. So there's lots of uh, ROI connected to healthcare planning. And I think that if advisors can really clearly communicate that um, either to their leadership team as well as to their clients, it makes implementing this workflow a lot easier. Totally. No, I completely agree. And I think that something that we always come across is that no matter what the topic is that, that you're addressing as a financial advisor, it's often challenges to know where to start, right? And time and time again, we hear no matter if advisors are doing things in-house or they're working with a great partner like Caribou, a lot of the processes, a lot of the, the actual structure that keeps that business going and that actual relationship with the client on track is spread across so many different places. For those of you on the call that are Hubble users, we know that you continue to build out more and more workflows to structure those different types of conversations and all the different life events that you help your clients through. For those of you that are not familiar with Hubble yet, you're probably using spreadsheets, sticky notes, whiteboards. You're probably keeping track of things in your head. So that's why at Hubble we think it's so important to find and work with great partners like Caribou to actually create purpose-built workflow templates together that are gonna help you through those different challenges and overcoming them, but are also gonna help you deliver that value and track that relationship so that you have one place to look and you have a compliant record of what you've actually done for a client over time. So we've had the pleasure of working with Christine and her team at Caribou over the last few months to plan this relationship and most importantly, to plan this workflow that we're gonna show you today. Caribou has a healthcare planner, it's digital, and you can access it online. Their process is already very straightforward. It makes navigating that conversation easy. Together, we've worked to make the actual process that drives those conversations for you with your clients that helps you track who is turning 65 or 64, as Christine mentioned, and to help you track those that you've already met with a year ago. And it's time to re-review and optimize and adjust a breeze. So I'm excited to jump in to Hubly first and show you what that looks like in the workflow that we've created. For those of you who are Hubly users, you can probably follow along as well by joining me inside of your own hub and just hitting the refresh button because Blair is right now working to put these, this workflow template into your hubs to make it available. If you like it, great, you can keep it. And we're gonna talk about next steps and signing up with Caribou. Uh, but if you think that it's uh, not just right yet, you can always keep it for later or you can remove it and we can add it back in at any time. So let's take a look without any further ado. So again, for those of you following along, you can join me in your hub. Up under your workflow menu, you're gonna find a new process for Caribou workflows. And that process is gonna have this Medicare initial enrollment at 65. This workflow is just like any other. If you select edit workflow, you'll see that it plans out the individual steps that would guide you through that client conversation and through the follow-ups. It's gonna help you not only identify which clients you're talking with right now, but how far along you are. And it's gonna make it really easy to create that visibility across your team, no matter who's working on that client. This workflow also comes pre-built with automations. 
these automations make it really easy to actually to actually begin talking with your clients and introduce this conversation at that 64th birthday, as Christine mentioned. So that's what the first automation rule here does, is that at the 64th birthday or 12 months before the 65th, your active clients will actually automatically be populated into this workflow. And you're going to get notified in Hubly saying that that client should have a, or you should have a conversation with that client about their Medicare eligibility. When you complete this conversation with any client, you're going to have a Medicare tag automatically attributed to that client's profile, making them really easy to identify both in Hubly as well as in your CRM, whether you use Wolfbox or Redtail, these tags will sync both ways. Makes it easy to keep that list of clients that you need to review those ongoing Medicare conversations with in the long term. So what that is gonna look like for you is that clients are gonna automatically appear in this workflow 12 months before that 65th birthday, just like our demo client, Chris here. Just like any other workflow, you can also add a client in manually just by selecting them from your list and they'll be added to your list here of clients to have a conversation about Medicare with. If you already have a group, maybe it's a tag group in Wealthbox or in Redtail, or maybe it's a stream for those of you that are Hubly users, you can always find that group just like you'd find a client and go ahead and add the entire list of clients into this workflow to have that conversation with. Now on an individual client by client basis, if we go ahead and click on Chris, the first client to have been added here, you're gonna see that all those tasks that we just showed you in that workflow settings are ready for you to use here. And they're created and curated by Christine and her team to match the process with Caribou. For each of these tasks that have a filled in paragraph icon or description, the team at Caribou has provided a little bit of context for this conversation, as well as a resource that you can use to actually guide the conversation and feel comfortable and ready for it with your client. They've also went ahead and provided an email template. This template can of course be customized to meet your voice and you know, your, your, your own email style in your firm. But you can see that, that you have a lot to go off of to introduce that context for your clients in scheduling that conversation with you. Once conversation is had, it's time to do that initial health planning analysis in Caribou. So Christine's going to show you the Caribou platform in just a second here. But this step actually guides you through exactly what to do, when, and how. This makes it really easy, especially if your team is growing. And maybe not everyone gets to meet with Christine and her team to see what it looks like in action. You can see the team has included both a video walking anyone through that process, as well as the steps right here in that task's description. The Health Planner app is linked at the very top, and you have some other useful resources for FAQs. That doesn't mean you have to read this every single time that you do it, but it means that if you ever need a hand, it's always just a click away. Once you've initiated the health planning analysis in Caribou, Hubby's gonna automatically remind you to follow up to ensure that that questionnaire gets completed. This gets done by that automatic reminder that gets scheduled at the time that you complete the task before it. If you have somebody else on your team that's gonna help you with this, in Hubly, you can always have that task pre-assigned to your admin or your client service associate for them to send that all up to the client as well. Whoever's assigned that task is gonna get notified when that task gets assigned. They're also gonna get a helpful email that they can again use courtesy of Caribou in order to bring this back to the client's attention. And as with every other task, there's a quick description where, which explains where you can actually go to check 
on the status of that questionnaire. So you don't actually have to ask the client that they've completed it. You can check the health planner app in Caribou, and Christine's going to show you how again in just a moment here later on in the demo. If that follow-up is necessary and you send it, you can have your team check it off. If that follow-up was not required, you can always mark this task as not applicable because in Hubble you can always customize every workflow. And this will just apply to Chris this one time, marking Chris's follow-up task as something that didn't need to happen. You can also delete this task and that'll simply remove it from Chris's workflow if you didn't need to actually send that follow-up email. So for those of you who are Hubble users, you're already very familiar with this. These workflows are fully customizable for each specific client's need. And it also means that if in the conversation with Chris, you identified a couple other to-dos for yourself or your team, you can always customize this workflow just for Chris, capturing those to-dos, assigning them to the right team member, and leaving any notes as your own description on this new custom task just for Chris. Once you've received the results and reviewed them, you can receive these in your inbox. You can go ahead and mark this off. This is important because it leaves that audit trail of who reviewed the results and when. That's why this task is included so that you actually, when you, when you look back on this workflow in the future, you'll see exactly what got done by who and when for this client. If a consultation is required, we have an optional task here that you can book it with Caribou. This is something that the advisor is responsible for doing. And this walks you through exactly how to go ahead and book that call. Again, this can be done through the health planner, which Christine can demo. And last but not least, we have this task to remind you to update the financial plan with analysis outputs. This is a task, again, that if you have a financial planner on your team, you can pre-assign over to the financial planner. And they will be notified when all the other tasks are completed and it's their turn to go ahead, review the outputs, and update that client's financial plan. In Hubly, it's going to be really easy to track the status and the progress of all of your Medicare conversations that you're currently having with your clients and that are scheduled to be had in the future. You can see the progress updates in real time in the clientele. You can see exactly a preview of what those next two tasks are and who is responsible for that very next, next task. In this case, the optional one to book that consultation with Caribou. If any client needs to take priority over others, you can always reorder this list dragging them to the top. And it makes it really easy for you to also go and find any client either actively in this workflow or just looking them up from your list of clients from before to see exactly what was done for them, by who, and when. This way, over time, you can see which conversations you've had, which notes you've left on those discussions, and then who they were held with if you're working as a part of a bigger team. It also makes it so that as your team grows and evolves, everybody knows how to have those conversations in the same consistent way. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You also don't have to spend copious amounts of hours training and shadowing each other just to deliver value to your clients in the form of a Medicare review. Christine, I'd love to pass it over to you now to show us the Health Planner app and the corresponding steps in the Caribou platform. Perfect. Happy to. And I love that you picked the client who was 38 because we've actually, we've actually done an analysis for clients in their 30s before. It's happened less than a handful of times, but clients have come with those questions of what does Medicare look like for me? And it's never too early to start planning. So uh, I'm going to switch over and walk through what each of those steps looks like in practice directly in Health Planner which is the name of our software. So there are six steps there. Hopefully they're easy enough uh, to follow, start the conversation, initiate the analysis, follow up with the client, get the results, book a call, and then update the financial plan. So we'll walk through that now so you can see what that looks like. 
Caribou is usually white labeled. Uh, we have our logo here just for sake of the demo. And if you are a new partner of Caribou, this list will actually be empty. This is all just uh, demo data here. So your first step in order to initiate the analysis after you've started that conversation with your client, and thank you for, for showing the brochures and kind of the tips and strategies that are in there, Ron. But the first step is to add them to the household. We make this as easy as possible for you. You can even send us a list of your client's information exported from your CRM, and we can upload it for you. But a lot of advisors approach healthcare planning on a rolling basis, meaning as the need arises. So it just takes 30 seconds, name, email, and a phone number for all members of the household. That's a really important piece here is that even if you have one individual turning 65, don't neglect their spouse or a kid who might be still on their insurance plan and now need to find other options. So I guess the, the learning there is healthcare planning can't be approached in isolation for initial Medicare enrollments. Always ensure the whole client scenario, the household scenario rather, is included here. So any kids, if they're still under the age of 26, can also be added to the household. Once you have that household set up, which hopefully took no more than 30 seconds, your next step is to initiate the analysis. So here you'll see actually embedded within our platform, the long list, which was on one of the first few slides we went through of life events. All these life events impact your healthcare costs. So they present an opportunity to talk to your client about healthcare. We're gonna scroll down here to the one about Medicare. And I think that for the sake of this demo, uh, we're talking about initial enrollment in Medicare. That could be right at 65. It could also be at 72 because they've been still working. So let's just click that one for fun. Then you hit continue. You can add any notes that help us personalize the experience for your client. We've seen everything in this notes box, even you know, not very technology savvy. Please call to complete profile. That's something that our team is actually willing to do. If there's no notes to add or you've written them in, all you have to do then is press launch. For the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna hit back so you can see that this household is already established. And what happens when you press launch is it initiates a new message, a new conversation here. And this is where all communication happens. So once your client has completed their pro or set up their profile, this is where you can actually ask our team questions so that you're not left alone. And you can also um, communicate back and forth with your client about the results of the analysis. When the client has completed their profile, you also have the direct results inside here. So now we're on steps four, which are that the client completed the analysis. You can now view it. You can download the report that was generated. That's a whole webinar in and of itself. So we're not gonna go through that today but you can see some of the financial outputs that were provided based on the information that the client presented. So these are all numbers, real data provided by the client related to their premiums, their out-of-pocket maximum. We calculate the financial risk for the household and for individual members of the family based on the year. We also summarize their current healthcare expenditure, any tax deductible amount, and any tax savings from an HSA account. So this is the step of updating the financial plan. Whether you have a financial planner to assign that to or whether you're doing it, hopefully all the information is here for you to take these numbers and plug them back in to that financial plan. Any new Medicare uh, options derived from our analysis are available here in the download report feature. So that's where they're actually seeing the new Medicare plans that are suggested for them on that initial enrollment or if they're renewing it every year during open enrollment. The last thing that I'd like to walk you through is just that step five, which I kind of skipped over, which is that if you'd like to engage us in uh, speaking with your client or speaking with you to explain the results of the analysis, right here, you actually have the ability to book directly with our team using our embedded calendar system. So no communication over email, no back and forth trying to uh, coordinate multiple people's schedule, you actually have the ability to go ahead and book 
You can add yourself, you can add your clients to the team or to the call, and we can go through the results together uh, with you and with your client to ensure that the client also has that final action item of enrolling in the plan, really crossing, crossing that finish line and um, finishing that action item of Medicare enrollment. So everything's here for you to be able uh, to go through those steps. Hopefully it's easy and straightforward. If not, Hubly has all of the steps outlined, there's videos there, there's supporting documentation, and all of that documentation can also be found in the Learn Center here as well. Ron, back over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christine. So you can now see with that workflow in Hubly, it does really help you keep all those steps in order, and it makes it really easy for you to make sure that if you feel like you're forgetting something, it, you have one place to look, you can see exactly how far along you are, with the client that you're working on. You can see what you've done for past clients as well. And so it makes it really easy to know exactly where you left off. And for the next step, if you need a hand, as Christine mentioned, we have that awesome description. We have the linked resources and Caribou has the whole Learn Center where you can go ahead and find your own answers or connect with their team to get the answers directly from them. So for those of you who are Hubly users, uh, for those of you that are following along live on the call, you should already see that workflow in your hub. For those of you that are watching the recording or not Hubly users yet, you can always message us once you're on board with Hubly. Just send us a message in the chat and we'll make sure that this workflow is one of those templates that you get started with. There are many other templates that we also have. And so as you can always imagine, um, you can ask for those templates or a fresh copy at any time. And our awesome support team will go ahead and add those to your hub. Now, the template is only half the equation. The other half is actually getting started with Caribou. So if you're not a Caribou user yet, we invite you to book that call with them today. If you have a phone handy, you can always scan that QR code. If you prefer to type, you can visit caribouwealth.com slash book a call. And that will go ahead and help you connect with Christine and her team. They'll answer any questions. They'll help you get set up with that um, account. And then you'll have that corresponding workflow in Hubly that you can work within uh, through the Health Planner app. If you're not a Hubly user yet, you can always book a call with our team. You can ask any questions about Hubly. And as I already mentioned, we make it really easy to get started with this awesome template and many others. You can visit us at myhubly.com to learn more. I see questions are already starting to come in. So to start us off, um, Christine, how early do you suggest planning for a client's initial Medicare enrollment? Yeah, good question. And we touched on this a couple of times and maybe there was even a bit of conflicting advice because I said that we've supported a client at 38 uh, with their initial Medicare enrollment. But in an ideal world, at least a year, uh, again, we see a lot of our, our partners explore that at 62, 63, but to give you and your client enough time for that lead up to really have the time to make the decision, evaluate options, typically at least a year is uh, the best scenario to plan for. You have in your initial enrollment, the three months leading up to your, the month of your 65th birthday, the month of your 65th birthday, and three months after to actually enroll in Medicare. And then if you're working past 65, it's a whole different set of rules and regulations so in that circumstance, definitely get ahead of that about a year's time in advance to ensure that you don't miss any dates or timelines because there are penalties involved. You can also risk being uninsured as well as risk having to go through medical underwriting. Awesome. We got a couple more questions coming in here. Does Caribou provide impartial analysis between Medigap and Medicare Advantage options? Yeah, we sure do. So I think there's two components to this. The impartial piece, which is, you know, what incentives does Caribou have when it comes to presenting your clients with options? The answer is none. Uh, we charge for our software. We don't make any commissions based on the placement or choice of a policy for your clients. So it truly is objective guidance that's delivered to clients. The second component of that question is differentiating between Medigap and Medicare Advantage. I touched on this just a little bit as we were going through one of the challenges. 
Again, that's a whole webinar in and of itself. It's a really complex decision. And yes, we do take the data presented to us by your clients to be able to better align which option fits their preferences based on what they've reported. Ultimately, it's yours and the client's decision, but being able to understand uh, how their preferences guide that decision and then see both of those options because we always do present both of those options in the report. That's the part of the analysis that I didn't go in and download. Um, it's a really important consideration. So we always show it, it's impartial. It's a great question. Thank you, uh, anonymous attendee for asking. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Ryan here, is there a cost for advisors to get set up? So I mentioned this just briefly in passing as well that uh, our model is that you pay as you use the platform. It's based on a membership uh, of the client and the household uh, that you activate, not on how many advisors are on the platform. So we often work with the financial planning department. Maybe there might be one to two champions at the firm who are the heaviest utilizers of our software. It doesn't matter if you're a team of one or a team of 100, or if you have all 100 login, or you only have one person of 100 login makes no difference to what you pay. You only pay based on the number of clients that end up getting added and activated on the platform. Wow, that's great. Uh, we have another great question here. Do you advise on clients who are still working and have health insurance coverage through their employer? For example, all of their, all of the steps they need to follow if they want to stay on that insurance plan, et cetera. Yes, so uh, this is, an interesting question in the context of post-65 Medicare world, uh, oftentimes employers have very strict regulations as to the steps an employee needs to take when they turn 65. Some mandate that they enroll in Medicare Part A, some mandate A and B, some kick you off the plan. This is true of you as well as your spouse. And sometimes the rules for both of those are actually different. So really important to approach that transition with clients, even if they're still working, ask them these questions, ask them if they've spoken to their HR department and know the answers around what they want them to do regarding their Medicare enrollment. Comparing employer coverage to Medicare, again, is an opportunity to connect with your client. I've seen circumstances where the employer coverage was a lot more expensive uh, versus Medicare and also the reverse. It really depends on what the client has access to. So making that comparison is important. For example, if you work with business owners, they usually don't have an employee subsidized plan. Their premiums might be $1,500 a month. In those cases, Medicare is actually often the better option. Um, of course, you wanna consider the quality of the coverage too. Uh, so that's of course an, an important consideration. I'll just lightly touch on pre-65 clients. Again, in those circumstances, comparing their employer coverage to the marketplace is something that you can do or if they're retiring, comparing COBRA to the marketplace or a spouse's plan to the marketplace. There's all sorts of different comparisons you can make based on the life of it. Um, but I'll, I'll keep that part short just because I know we're here to talk about Medicare. Awesome. And expanding on your first answer there, can we as the advisor still write the policy for the client? Yeah, this is a fantastic question. The answer is yes. We don't sell the the policy. Uh, we help and do our best to close the loop to bring that client over the finish line by providing them with direct enrollment uh, directions on medicare.gov or by enrolling directly in the carrier once they have made that policy selection. But if you are licensed, this is an additional revenue opportunity for you to actually sell the client the policy. And hopefully it's minimal, if any, work on your part to actually create that additional revenue channel for you. Fantastic. A uh, question from Christian here. What's your capacity to field questions from advisors nationwide? And how big is your bandwidth? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, so we're, we're growing just like Hubbly. You know, we're onboarding advisors and team members uh, continuously, and we do that based on capacity. So we are always adding to the team based on new customers that we bring in. We have a team uh, nationally right now that can support different time zones, different geographical nuances and Medicare plans. Like for example, if you're in a state that doesn't follow the lettered plan system, and instead you have the, the core and supplemental plan system, we support all of that. So we work with firms that might be as small as family offices, less than hundred clients. And we work with firms 
who have thousands of clients scattered across the country, multiple offices, and billions in assets under management. Um, so we're here to grow and scale with you uh, because we know that your practices are constantly growing as well. Very nice. And I we may have time for one or two more questions. I've had a relationship with a local Medicare broker and I've sent my clients down for years. What's the difference between referring a client um, out to a broker versus delivering the service myself? Great question. So this all comes down to whether or not you want to internalize this offering. So we spoke a little bit throughout this webinar about the return on investment. And one of the key things is the relationship. It's differentiating yourself. It's standing out and it's addressing proactively client requests. So if you want to internalize that and you want to be the one delivering the service, you want clients to come directly to you when you have these questions, and you also want to have that direct feedback to your financial plan, do it yourself. There are tools today to help you do this efficiently. Hopefully the last 44 minutes helped to convince you of that. Uh, whether it's us or you know somebody else, there are tools that exist. Uh, to be able to help you do this efficiently. We have found when you outsource things, it isn't necessarily scalable. You might find a local broker where you live, but again, your clients are all over the place. So maybe they're not licensed um, to sell or work with your clients in other states, as well as their incentives might be a little bit misaligned. Uh, their incentive is to get paid based on the commission from the insurance plan. Even if you've vetted this resource and truly do trust them, we're, uh, we're humans, we're driven by incentives. There's always the chance that, you know, they might not have your client's best interests in mind. And so we've found that a model like ours just more, does more closely align with the um, way that advisors are also starting to charge their clients for financial planning fees or for other service offerings under their uh, umbrella of offerings. Amazing. So many great questions today. And Christine, you did such a great job answering all of them. And I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of their day. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hubbly team, for having me.